It is always you will be informative for general practitioner, and I welcome the Dr. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's very difficult for me to bring your attention after the cultural robot in the chess theatre, but I try my level best there. Even money in this part of country is not safe. It is infected with some bacteria. It needs some good antibiotics. Otherwise, this government won't accept your money. What they will send a notice that it is money is infected there. Organism. 
Unfortunately, the pulse sensations of the antibiotics is creeping up. Not only for the gram negative bacteria, even for the gram positive bacteria, the MICs are creeping up. This is MIC free for vancomycin. If you think gram positive bacteria, use vancomycin. But now vancomycin MICs are going up. In another couple of years, the vancomycin may become resistant shortly. This is our surgeons I put there, but even physicians also not different there. This is I published in IKI class a couple of years back. What happened is, when to use antibiotic prophylaxis during surgery? One hour before surgery. Just at the time of induction of anesthesia, you should give a surgical prophylaxis. How many surgeons giving? Since ours is a tertiary care hospital, we are trained our surgeons, we are trained our anesthetists. So our first choice, if you see the first bar, 99% of the time, the first dose of antibiotic, at the time of induction of anesthesia is going on. What is the antibiotic choice for the antibiotic prophylaxis of surgery? 75% of the time it is followed. What is required for surgical prophylaxis is only single dose of antibiotic for most of the surgery, except some surgery like we are putting processes like cardiac bypass if you are doing liver transplant. For this you need minimum 48 hours. All other surgeries only one shot of antibiotic is needed. If surgery is not more than 4 hours, one more shot is repeated doing the thing. That's what surgical prophylaxis. You should not start two days before surgery, country for five days. But what happened even in a tertiary care hospital, the infectious disease department is functioning. Our surgeons are stopping antibiotic only at 40% of the time on one shot or maximum. This is 40 hours they take into consideration, not one shot they take into consideration. 40 hours they are stopping only at 40% of the time. Not even 50% of the time they are stopping antibiotics on time. I am giving 40 hours delays, in spite of 40 hours delays, our surgeons are not stopping. This is the same thing for the physician, I am not blaming surgeons. Physicians also the same thing, they are responsible for that. Surgical prophylaxis means single shot. Except for few surgeries, we can give for 40 hours. Why I am bothering there? What is the FDA approval for antibiotics in 2008 to 2011? Nothing has got approved. No antibiotic has got FDA approval. Nothing is going to happen, I will show the slide there. So bad breath means we need drugs, but there is no effective antibiotic right now available. This is going to available tomorrow? No. 2015 one antibiotic is going to come into the market, it's called AV Bactam. What is AV Bactam? Like your Cipercell Intensive Bactam, Tamaprosum Cell Bactam, it is a beta activated inhibitor. Are you going to suffer, are you going to solve your problem of carbapenemase production? It is not going to solve the problem of carbapenemase production. That is, inhibitor and carbapenemase resistance, this AV Bactam is not going to test the same bacteria. So what drug is going to be available till 2018? Nothing is there till 2018. Keep in mind, no antibiotic is going to come in 2012 or 2013 or 2014. Till 2018, there is no good antibiotic for gram-negative bacteria. So what are the options for us? Either you pray the God or you eat the roof. That's what we did in 1940s. Before the antibiotic, eat the roof. 1950s and 1960s, pencil in, eat pencil in. 1985 and 1990s, eat flow of 2012, nothing is there. Either eat the roof or pray the God. This is going to be a news in 2013. Some trust will release the thing there. There is no antibiotic, good dress, nothing there. Prayer, eat the roof. So, what is the role for the antibiotics? I am not telling anything like a rule. This is Sir Alexander Fleming in 1945 has told how to use antibiotic in 1945 when he invented the pencil in there. If you want to use the antibiotic, decide whether it is needed or not. Whether indicated is needed or not, first thing you should ask whether it is indicated or not. If it is indicated, do some maximum dose. There is no dose called cefataxin 1 gram B. If you see the cefataxin, what is the dose? 2 gram IVQ 6 RE. If you want to use for meningitis, 2 gram IVQ 4 RE. If you want to use the repercal intensive vector, 4.5 gram IVQ is not the dose. 4.5 grams IVQ 6 RE, unless the creatinine has got some problem. If you want to use Milovirum for non meningitis or non endocarditis cells, use 1 gram IVQ 8 RE. If you want for meningitis, go for 2 grams IVQ 8 RE. Don't cut short your antibiotic because of the cost reasons. If you want to use antibiotic, use the maximum dose. But the durations of most of the indications are not cut down. For most of the indications, the duration is 5 to 7 days or maximum 7 to 10 days. Except endocarditis, septic arthritis, or abscesses. For all other things, most of the things that if you see the literature, for most of the indications and durations of antibiotic time is defined. So I will put some of the case studies there. Here is the case of 25 year old lady, previously healthy lady, presented with the history of sore throat. Stop for the last three days. Exam reduced temperature of 19 degrees. Essentially normal temperature. A congested pharynx with no experience and no cervical lymph nodes. The best treatment option would be for this lady. How many go for start acetromycin? Just lift your hands. 
Good. Start with more than couple of the body. Okay, the cephalexin or cephaloxin or even cephic side. Couple of hands. Throat pressure. Habit of pressure in the pressure. Rapid stuff screen. Most of the time it's not available in India. It's New York is available in the training. Use some criteria. Anybody aware of this criteria? Great. So before you write antibiotic thing, what you are doing? Taking a photograph is not necessary there. What are you going to achieve with the photograph? I do not know. Why this man is taking the photograph? So, uh, appropriate antibiotic use means you should know what is the syndrome I make here. So, ID is similar to neurology. When the neurologist goes, what is the syndrome? Where is the lesion? He is asking the thing. As an ID physician, when he go, what is the syndrome I am dealing with? Here the lady presented with a cough, congested pharynx, with some uh, fever, so no diagnosis of pharyngitis. So what are the organisms going to cause pharyngitis? Mostly viral. Except on bacteria, we are bothered with group A beta hematic cryptococci. Why I am bothered about group A beta hematic? It may land in gonorrhea nephritis, it may land in rheumatic fever. So how to differentiate whether it is a virus or virus, bacteria, any criteria can apply. That's where the center of candida came into place. If you ask more questions, the person present with the pharyngitis, is there any history of fever? Look for tonsillar x-ray. Three, look for, ask the history of cough. Cough favoring more of viral etiology rather than bacterial etiology. Look for tonsillar x-ray. Look for history of fever. Tender and asymmetrical lymph nodes. If all the four criteria is there, you are eligible to write some antibiotic. If none of the criteria is there, do not write antibiotic. If the criteria are two or three, depending upon your prophylaxis, depending upon the indications, you can write it. So if you can see, Screen, the person present with pharyngitis use of set of criteria screen. All four is absent, do not write antibiotic. If all the four is present, write antibiotic. Two and three make your own decision. That's what I can say for pharyngitis. That is one of the problems you commonly face in your day to day practice there. So, some symptoms are very difficult to understand, but some concepts also difficult to understand. I try to put it in easy there. So, first concept is make your syndrome. What syndrome you are dealing with it? Second, once you make a syndrome, what is the organism causing the syndrome? That's what ID. ID is nothing but different. What is the syndrome you are dealing with it? What is the organism you are going to deal with it? So this is the first point before we make a decision of antibiotic. This is case study do what I showed earlier, but I changed the antibiotic. This is the real antibiotic sensitivity pattern. She is a 58 year old lady, came with a history of fever, chill, loin pain, loss of appetite, and weakness of seven days duration. Past medical history, she is an active lady. No hospital admissions, no antibiotic intake in the last one year essentially. On examination, tenderness in the left loin is present. Urine rotation is full of hospital. The urine pressure is given here. What antibiotic are going to use for this lady? How many wanted nitrofurbine for this lady? Simple antibiotic, osteopathy antibiotic. Only single hand is going up. How many for netapenum? Couple of hands again say nitrofurbine, netapenum. This is one of the group 1 carbapenum. Imipenum, megapenum is called group 2 carbapenum. Entapidum is called group 1 carbapenum. It has got narrow spectrum actions against E. coli and Clepsiella. It doesn't have any action against Colomonas or Cinetobacter. It has got only E. coli and Clepsiella. The organism is E. coli. How many want to get entapidum? Because the advantage of this carbapenum is once a day. All of the carbapenum is thrice a day. Imipidum is four times a day. Mirapidum is three times a day. Doripidum is three times a day. Entapidum is once a day. No takers. What are you going to do? Refer to ID. Revenge of microbes. 1969, all the bacteria were susceptible. The CDC chat told, this is the time we can close the chapter on infectious diseases. We won the battle against infectious diseases. Forty years later, <coughs> the bacterial revenge is killing us. There is no antibiotic against essentially good antibiotic. So this is the sensitivity to your favorite nofloxacin, ciprofloxacin. What is the sensitivity of nofloxacin, ciprofloxacin in Chennai? Our data is showing only 15% of the time the E. coli is sensitive to ciprofloxacin, nofloxacin in this hospital there. So ciprofloxacin sensitivity to E. coli is 15%. So if you want to treat UTI with your nofloxacin, ciprofloxacin, your success for 10 patients is only one and a half times. You are going to pay three and a half times in this scenario. Because the resistance is constant between 2001 to 2008, even 2009, 2011, up to my colleagues are following them, they are showing the same trend, even the resistance is going up now. So what is for nitrofurbine? The second rule is, you should know the spectrum of the activity. Nitrofurbine has got action against E. coli, yes. Nitrofurbine action against Clepsilla has action. But nitrofurbine will not absorb. <laughs> nitrofurbine, whatever you are giving, is excreted in the kidney into the bladder. Here the diagnosis, what is ID diagnosis for this case? UTI, 
for the person complaints of loin pain fever, naturally the spinal nephritis, not ordinary cystitis. When dealing with spinal nephritis, you need a good antibiotic that should maintain the kidney. It should not excrete it through the bladder. So if you use nitrofrontine for spinal nephritis, your chances of failure is very high. Nitrofrontine is a drug for cystitis, low UTI. Nitrofrontine is not a drug for spinal nephritis, it is not a drug for prostatitis. So nitrofrontine equally clustella, cystitis, low UTI usage. Not for pyelonephritis, not for prostatitis. So you should know the spectrum of your antibiotic, you should know the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. That is more important. In theory there are a lot of differences between theory and practice, but in practice there is no difference. This is the third case study. 21 year medical student from USA. Travelled to Rajasthan, two schools for two days, eight to times a day, watery, foul smelling, mucus present, no blood, is got the mild feverish feeling. This is the Rajasthan's favorite temple there. If you will see, what antibiotic? Any lopramide? No lopramide. The fact is coming. Something is coming in the market. Ofloxacin dendrozole. How many hands? Ofloxacin dendrozole. Ciprofloxacin dendrozole. Yeah, couple of hands. Favorite brand. Metrinozole, ciprofloxacin. Same thing. Okay. Nice of Dr. Rice. Acithromycin. Nobody likes acithromycin. So, what's your diagnosis here? ID diagnosis, acute gastroenteritis, chronic traveler's diarrhea. So you should know your diagnosis is traveler's diarrhea. So traveler's diarrhea means what are the organisms going to cause traveler's diarrhea? Either E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, Campylobacter. What is the sensitivity of ciprofloxacin to Salmonella, Shigella in this part? Almost none. So you cannot use your ciprofloxacin to treat Salmonella as well as Campylobacter in this part of the country. So what drug is best against Salmonella, Shigella now? Acithromycin has got much better action against Salmonella Shigella compared to your Florocrolol. So, Shigella is a sensitive bacteria. So, Salmonella, Shigella, E. coli, and Campylobacter, your acithromycin is going to take care. What is the need for metridozole for an acute diarrhea illness? It's not a mimic disease, it's not a giardiasis. Giardiasis won't present within, we can't make a diagnosis on day 2. We can make a diagnosis on day 7. Bloated development, passing thing, the person has got some dehydration, something there. But here the person has got acute diarrhea illness, only travels there, yeah. These are the four bacteria. This is the sensitivity pattern. Why you want to use supraplastocin? Why you want to use metadrosol? Treat the acetylomycin. Because the person has got feverish feeling. The person has got 8 to 10 times the passing. 2 to 3 times, there is no fever, use only antibiotic. Presence of fever, presence of blood, presence of more than a loose tooth, you can go for antibiotic. This is the symptom for diarrhea. If you want to use for antibiotic and diarrhea, fever should be there. Blood should be there in the stools or the person should be passing more times and the diarrhea is causing for more than 3 to 4 days. Not for 1 day diarrhea, not for 2 day diarrhea, you need antibiotics. It's happened to anybody, so you should know the sensitivity pattern. The E. coli and Cursial Salmonella is now resistant to ciprofloxacin most of the time there. This is my last case study there. She is a 26 year old female. Recent LST has 2 months back, that means she has got some hospitalization in the last 2 months. Now complaints of recurrent skin lesions, boils, legs, improving with antibiotics but recurring again. Her husband had similar illness one month back. On examination, this is a big boil on the right forearm. Similar boils coming and going in different parts of the body. The smear taking from things called Staphylococcus aureus. What is the organism sensitive? Amic acid sensitive, ciprofloxacin in ML, moderately sensitive, staphylococcus in resistance, co-triboxacin sensitive, erythro resistance, panco sensitive. What is the name of this Staphylococcus aureus? MSSA or MRSA? That is the MRSA, Methicillin Harris in the report. This is what most of the private hospitals, most of the private lab report. This is the most private lab. I call, I don't know to name the name, but if you find the left top corner is one of the leading labs in Chennai. There is no Methicillin reported. Usually Methicillin is not reported in any lab there. Only to find out whether it is Methicillin resistant or not, do for Oxacillin. But not even Oxacillin is reported there. Ideally, if there is no oxacillin, go for cephalexin. If the cephalexin is resistant, it is MRSA. Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Usually this is called community acquired because community acquired means lot of antibiotic will be sensitive. So what the point I am telling here, know the resistance pattern. If some lab says something, don't take the lab value in particular. You should. What will happen is most of the time E. coli will get right infection. Cephalexin sensitive, cephalexin resistant. What is this meaning? One third generation cephalosporin resistance means all third generation cephalosporins are resistant. That is called ESPL resistance mechanism. Cephalococcus aureus means you should ask whether it is an MSSA or MRSA. 
because the treatment is different. If it is a density separate organ, use sustentation separate point, separation or separation there. But if it is methicillin resistant means don't use separation separate oxide. Either use lidomycin or you can go for vancomycin the uh, uh, vancomycin lidosoli or ticoplanin. So you should know what is the resistance mechanism you are doing. That's more important. Finding the resistance mechanism is even difficult compared to your prayers. So the antibiotic therapy principle summary is it should be pathogen directed. If you want to do the pathogen directed, you should make your ID diagnosis first. What is the syndrome you are dealing with? It? Once you know the syndrome, what is the bacteria? Then third thing is what is the spectrum of antibiotic? It is a narrow spectrum or broad spectrum. What is the spectrum? Suppose if I use nitrofundibine, what are the bacteria is covered? E. coli is You don't test pseudomonas, you don't test acetobacter. Similarly, if I am using vancomycin ketoplanin, it will only act on gram-positive organisms, particularly staphylococcus, enterococcus, streptococci. It won't have any actions against gram-negative. So if you want to use meropinum, it has action against all the bacteria except MRSA, VRE. So once you know the antibiotic, what are the bacteria the antibiotic covers you should know. This is the bacteria I am going to treat. Whether the antibiotic I am using is going to cover these bacteria, then only you decide with antibiotic. You know the susceptibility patterns. What is the susceptibility pattern? In your local area, in your local hospital. You should know how to read the minimum resistance pattern like MSSA, MRSA, ESPL or not. These are the common mechanisms we are seeing in gram positives and gram negatives. So you should know the syndrome first, organism causing the syndrome, what is the uh, antibiotic sensitivity pattern, what is the susceptibility, what is the resistance rate, then your antibiotic choice is very easy. Government of India started initiating when thousand four hundred and forty tigers left, they started state tigers. But not even single antibiotic is there. No action has taken against preserved antibiotics. Almost all the antibiotics have gone. And 1414 tigers have left, common started same tigers. I do not know when to save antibiotics now. If you want to learn more about antibiotics, come for us in high next month, 24 to 26. You will learn a lot about antibiotics. Thank you for your patient listening. <laughs> Even in the ESPL, there is uh, AMC resistant, OXA resistant, uh, OXA uh, resistant producing ESPL are coming now. And uh, that also is uh, considered for uh, you know, uh, choosing the antibiotic. And particularly because my thoughts are in our hospital, yes. they are reporting. That's all. Particularly in OPD practice, I don't mention the thing there. But ESPL means extended spectrum beta lactamase. What is extended spectrum beta lactamase? When a gram negative bacteria is resistant to any of the third generation cephalosporins, like ceftriaxone, cefataxin, cefaprotazone, any of the third generation cephalosporins is resistant means that is an ESPL producing organisms. So, one third generation cephalosporin resistance means don't use other. The antibiotic before says cefataxin resistant, they didn't mention about ceftriaxone, don't try ceftriaxone for ESPL. This ESPL, another ESPL mechanism is called AMC. That is one of the mechanisms called resistance mechanism. AMC. What AMC does is, in the presence of ESPL, you can use beta lactam, beta lactam as inhibitors like triple clean dose of lactam, semaprosome cell lactam. But when the organism produces AMC means, you cannot use BLBLA because if you see the resistance pattern, sepataxin resistance, semaprosome cell lactam resistance, triple clean dose of lactam resistance means, it is mostly AMC producer. MC means you cannot use BLBLA. Only option available is Capapinum. Then the other mechanism you are telling about AFSA. AFSA is one form of efflux mechanism we can call it. Usually that will knock out some of the Capapins also there. So if you know the resistance mechanism, if it is an ESPL, don't use third generation cephalos for it. If it is an MC producer, don't use BLBLA. In addition to third generation. Third generation also is not only, you cannot use uh, <coughs> BLBLA. But fourth generation cephalos for semi may act against MC producers. If it is pure MC producer, if it is an OXA look upon the sensitivity, you may use carbapenum or it's sometimes very difficult to use carbapenum also in situation. So this is a common gram negative resistance mechanisms, ESPL, MC and OXA. What is the antibody? How long the antibody can be for example, cancer group, sensitive organism? That is the antibody. How long is it for? That's what you know the organism. If it is an E. coli or Garcella, if it is present in the blood, 7 to 10 days. If it is a UTI, uncomplicated UTI, 7 days is enough there. 
ఇప్పుడు ఇంత కాంప్లికేటెడ్ ఇంక ఏ పెద్ద బైలో ఉన్న ఫైట్ ఇస్ టెంట్ ఫుడ్ ఇండే అండ్ ఏ డోంట్ ఏరియా ద టమ్ రూల్ ఇస్ ఫర్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద రెకర్ ఆర్గనిజమ్స్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇన్ఫెక్షన్ ద టమ్ రూల్ ఇస్ 7 టు 10 డేస్ అండర్ ది ఎండోవైరస్ ఆర్ సెప్టిక్ ఆర్థ్రైటిస్ ఆర్ మెనింజైటిస్ ఆర్ లోకల్ హాసిస్ ఫర్ దట్ యు కెన్ గో ఫర్ బీ టు కో విత్ దట్ ఫర్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద బ్రెస్ట్ టీమ్ ఇన్ఫెక్షన్ 7 టు 10 డేస్ మాక్సిమం 10 టు 40 డేస్ ఇస్ ఎనఫ్ దట్ కెన్ బి కంప్లీట్ యాంటీబయోటిక్ There is no role for combination of antibiotics even for a septic patient in the hospital but the only thing what we are doing is now the only one antibiotic working against is called polystyl. Outdated antibiotic of 1960s and 1970s, polymix in B, polymix in E. Because of the nephrotoxicity, it was outdated in 1980s. But why we are using 1980s and 1980s molecules? That time, a lot of good molecules like cephalosporins are introduced. So we pushed out this molecule, 1980, white nephrotoxic antibiotic. But unfortunately, now the polymix is being a cholestin is only active antibiotic, active against whatever the carbapenemase I've told. If the EVPDM resistant, meropenem resistant means, we supposed to use cholestin. But what the concept is, if you start using cholestin alone, it may also develop resistance there. And no antibiotic till 2018. So if all the... Uh, antibiotic or resistance to EVPDM, meropenem, only cholestin is sensitive. You can try even though some of the antibiotic is resistant in your report like Therapresis, Selfactum or EVPDM, meropenem. Even though it is resistant to preserve cholestin sensitivity, you can combine the thing. Otherwise, there is no role for combination antibiotic for proven cultures. On the other hand, the person is terminated septic, ICU there, hypotension, respiratory distress, needing some ventilator support, needing some oxygen support. If you take in the cultures, cultures will come at 40 hours or 72 hours. At this point of time, you do not know, but you make a diagnosis, suppose the person has got hospital lipoid pneumonia. What are the organisms going to cause hospital lipoid pneumonia? One is called like a gram bosses, cephalococcus, cryptococcus, gram negative, E. coli, pseudomonas, acetobacter. These are the organisms that are going to cause hospital lipoid pneumonia. Then you should cover good gram negative with some carbapenem. And for gram bosses, you use some gram bosses agent like Ancovacin, Tricotanin or Lidosolin. For that situation, you can use a broad spectrum antibiotic, but at the end of 40 to 72 hours, Once you know the culture, there is no gramboxy organisms in the culture report, you cut down. That's called the de-escalation. Unfortunately, de-escalation is not happening. Once you see the culture report E. coli, it's sensitive to septic acid, sensitive to meropenem. You start at meropenem, what are you going to do? Continue meropenem. It is sensitive to drugs there. No. You should cut down to the septic acid. The lowest sensitivity or the narrowest spectrum you should come down. That's what D is there. If you continue meropenem, what will happen? Some pseudomonas, some acetyl vector may be there present in the axilla. It sees the carbapenem, it becomes resistant and you don't do the hand hygiene. You touch the patient, go to the other patient, that patient is more vulnerable. This pseudomonas go to that man, that becomes carbapenem is resistant, that man is suffering there. So always come down to the narrow spectrum. Once you know the cancer report, you see the thing there. Carbapenem is also sensitive, septriaxone also sensitive, come to septriaxone. That's what we are supposed to do. We have even have done our studies in Apollo Hospital there. It's getting published uh, soon there. When ID is involved, the antibiotic choice is not different. But what ID is doing is, we are doing a de-escalation compared to general physician. We are low, we know what the culture sensitivity, we immediately de-escalate at the 40 hours. Even sometimes cultures are not there, the person is clinically improving. When I start at gram positive agent, I can cut down the gram positive culture to the gram negative. That's what we are doing in there. So you should cut down, that's also more important. What about the combination? There is no role for that. There is no large randomized control to study and demonstrate any efficacy of typhoid combination therapy. But typhoid nowadays, ciprofloxacin lost the resistance pattern. So you cannot use ciprofloxacin fluoroprolol because the resistance mechanism commonly prevalent in typhoid is nandictic acid resistance mechanisms. Nandictic acid resistance means nandictic acid is the first generation fluoroprolol. If the first generation fluoroprolol is gone means second generation, third generation fluoroprolol like ciprofloxacin and even gemifloxacin other things, what will happen? The MICs are already cleaved up there. So you cannot use ciprofloxacin for typhoid there or fluoroprolol for typhoid. One fluoroprolol uses gadifloxacin but gadifloxacin is banned now there. So what is the drug of choice for typhoid now? Older antibiotic, Cotrimoxazole is doing well, Ampicillin is working, Acetromycin is working, Chloromphenicol is working. So these are all the drug of choice for the thing for typhoid now, but there is no role for combination. In general surgical practice, before surgery, one hour before surgery, we give empirically one maximum dose of an antibiotic. Then it is not possible to find out the sensitivity because empirically we have to give a broad spectrum antibiotic one hour before surgery so that if at all infection happens, it happens only at the time of the surgery, not before or after. So to prevent that, 
with one hour before surgery we give a broad spectrum antibiotic empirically without finding out the sensitivity it is not possible to find out the sensitivity do you think it is rational sir what i am telling about the study i am putting is surgical prophylaxis what is called surgical prophylaxis means we call we divide the surgery into clean surgery clean contaminated surgery and contaminated surgery there contaminated means already some focus of infection is there there is no role for prophylaxis straight away divide start treatment the thing there there is no role for surgical prophylaxis what i am telling the single dose prophylaxis is most of the time for clean surgery and clean contaminated the person comes without any infection he wanted to undergo some surgery if you want to cut the skin alone what are the organs telling in the skin staphylococcus or streptococcus most of the staphylococcus and streptococcus are sensitive thing there why i wanted one hour before incision because once you open the skin the organism load is maximum during the time of surgery so if you administer an antibiotic one hour before surgery the antibiotic concentration at the surgical site will be maximum so whatever organism present in the skin it will not go into the surgical site and cause the infection there so the surgical prophylaxis is different compared to surgical treatment there if you think the person has got already infected that's why the surgical prophylaxis for ordinary skin infections like some of the skin cutting surgery like breast surgery thyroid surgery one dose of gram positive agent like even cephalosporin and cefloxacin is enough but once you start penetrating to the bowel you may enter some gram negative also you may enter some other roles so you are supposed to give some gram positive gram negative agent like uh, gram positive gram negative along with some anaerobic cover needed that to one dose because you are penetrating the bowel so the surgical prophylaxis is completely different compared to treatment if it is a contaminated surgery the person present with some abscess or ruptured bowel do the surgery wash out Give short course of antibiotic for five days. That is not prophylaxis. Contaminated surgery doesn't come under surgical prophylaxis. I am telling person comes with some breast surgery or thyroid surgery. That is the infection. He comes with some thyroid uh, gland removal there. There is no infection at all. Only time of risk is the person is open the skin, some organism go and stick to the thing there. So provide the antibiotic one hour before surgery. Maximum concentration should be there the antibiotic surgical site. Once the surgery, the wound is closed, he becomes again normal. What is the need for antibiotic after the post operative? How do you say no antibiotic pre-2018? There's no antibiotic. Just the trials are going on. FDA is like a. Is this I'm taking for the FDA side only? There. 2018 is this. Yes, that's the reality. No, that's the reality. There is no approval process for FDA. That's why 2009 ITSA started. I'm not telling about the thing. The Judicial Review Society of America, after seeing this report, bad bus no drugs. They started the initiative. Bad bus need drugs. They call it call what is called. Uh, some president strategy that they told about 1960 some US president predicted somebody will go on land land the moon in 1960 predicted it in year so they called about lab and it's called the strategy they forgot the thing that so he predicted somebody will land the moon within 10 years in 1960 and somebody landed in the moon 1969 that's what idea says predicting that we need like a 10 new drugs before 2020 that's the strategy idea says not predicting within 2015 i am telling you not indian government is predicting it's the idea says But the FDA, even even FDA has taken removed lot of steps in the licensing process. There, FDA licensing is very difficult process. Now because of lack of antibiotic, FDA has almost cut down half of the licensing process. There, in spite of the thing, FDA has said, IDA is telling that 10 new drugs by 2020, 10 by 20 initiative. This is called 10 by 20 initiative. 10 new drugs for gram-negative bacteria by 2020. They are predicting 2020. We are expecting by 2018, 2019. That thing is there. Lot of processes are going on. Even uh, the U.S. president and uh, European Society president had an uh, emergency meeting like a couple of years back because of the antibiotic crisis there. In fact, U.S. and U.S. European problem is gram positive. Lot of gram positive agents are there. Their problem is not gram negative. In spite of the thing, they conducted meeting 2009. They have formed a strategy. Fine, it's done because the problem of uh, medical tourism. They can affect with some gram negative bacteria, so they worry. They started the initiative. So they are telling another ten years some molecules will come and if they cut down half of the licensing process are now. It's very uh, emergency crisis there. That's why in our meeting, the three-day meeting, one day they are conducting antibiotic stewardship there. They are bringing all the persons from US there. CDC head, they are bringing it there. They are bringing there like a UK like a head was doing antibiotic stewardship. What is the problem in the country? How are you going to deal with the next three years? What is the solutions you are offering? What is the roadmap you are having it there? We are bringing everybody there. The DTJ is giving rampantly for so many antibiotics. Ceftriaxone, Tavacan, Ceftriaxone, Tazobacan. Where is the evidence? Nowhere it is available in India. Anywhere in the world, it is available in India without any studies there. Lot of molecules available without evidence. If you ask the representatives, I am asking a company marketing Ceftriaxone, Tazobacan. Ceftriaxone, Tazobacan is marketed in India 
by one of the leading multinationals, I can I don't want to label the company there, multinational company, if you ask a single study there, no study is available. That's the status we are having. My feeling is as if I am coming out of the theatre of 2012 after watching the film. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, sir.